Hi there, my name's Alastair Kennedy and I'm the Sociable Social Worker and I give practical advice to social workers and those wanting to foster and adopt. And in this video today, I'm going to tell you a bit about what I found when I became a social worker. And so if you're a new social worker or even an experienced social worker, this might be useful to you. So being qualified is a whole new way of life. You're a professional social worker. There's no one looking over your shoulder at you. You're the professional now and your views matter. And so take a deep breath and you just get on with it and you'll be great. You'll be absolutely fantastic. And there are days that are going to be really tough and there's days that are going to be really daunting and there are days that are going to be so emotionally draining. You will think, oh, I don't really know if this was the job for me. But trust me, what you need to do is just minimise those feelings, manage those feelings and just think, you know, social work is a great job. I'm helping loads of people. I'm just going to crack on and get it done. Another thing you might find is that people are too busy for you when you become a new social worker. You'll have found as a student that people are quite receptive to you and they'll say, oh, a student, now, let's have a chat. But actually when professionals were all heads down and, and nose to the ground, then actually some people might just be a little bit dismissive and people will expect you to know what you're doing. There'll be no ways out of it. They'll expect you to be professional. You can't be asking the same questions you asked as a student. So what I always say to people, and in previous videos I have always said, seek out allies. Make sure you find the allies in the admin team. Make sure you find an ally and a social work assistant or whatever they call them nowadays. But you need to find allies to support you. You can't be going about going, what do I do with this? How do I find this? Where's the stationery cupboard? You just need to crack on. What you'll also find as a new social worker is that the decisions that you make are your own, you know, and you need to own them. And often they can be really life changing decisions that you're making for other people. And as a student, obviously there's more scrutiny in you. As I said, you've got someone over looking over your, your shoulder. But now these decisions about people's lives are in your hands and you have to wield that power carefully and wisely. And I always think to myself, if I was in that person's shoes, how would I feel about that situation? And that always calms me down and makes me think about things when I'm interviewing or I'm out doing a home visit. How would they feel about it? And uh, if the power were reversed. You'll often find yourself working alone. So you need to know the loan working policy and you need to make sure that people know where you're going at all times. It's marked up on a board, it's in a diary, it's in a computer system. And also it's really good to be able to text people to say, I'm going into a house, I'm back out of a house. There may be some security measures that your local authority have. Some people have um, mobile phone texts and systems and stuff like that. But also I've said in previous videos as well, is about your situational awareness. Who's out in the street when you park your car? Or if you get the bus, you know, who's behind you? Who's up the, we call it a close in Glasgow, but who's up the lane or whatever, or who's in the house? And who is actually in the house when you go into houses and actually ask people that question? Who's in the house with you? Nicely, um, so that you don't get caught out. But that's another part of safety and making sure you, and part of self-care as well, is about watching out for yourself. And also you need to watch out for other colleagues as well. Another thing you'll find is that your workload will probably double, sometimes even treble, and there'll be a lot of organisational change. And I said in a previous video about workloads that actually if you get into the red zone, which is about 15 to 20 cases, then you need to be talking to your manager about that. And I've also said about organisational change, it's just something that's going to happen. You just need to deal with it and crack on. Another thing you'll find is that a lot of clients just won't change their behaviours, are unwilling to change, and there's really nothing much you can do about it. And we're not there to criticise, we're not there to shame. I think we're a beacon of hope. And my last point is, sometimes when the workloads are massive and everything's on top of you and you've got all these different priorities and things, and I've said it before, just doing enough to get by is okay. If you're overwhelmed, it's okay just to do enough. As long as you're not compromising someone's safety or you're not compromising your values, it's okay just to do enough. And I don't think enough people say that and everybody puts pressure that each piece of work has to be exemplary in your first few years. 
as a new social worker. It doesn't. So there you have it, some new tips for new social workers and the things that I found as a social worker when I went into social work for the first time. Um, I hope those tips helped. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, press the subscribe button. And if you want notifications for other videos, ring the little bell. Ding-a-ling-a-ling. -a -ling -a -ling. Okay, thanks for your time.